Good morning, Fort McMurray, Wood Buffalo, and the rest of the world. You've tuned in to the Max City Morning Show. I'm your host, Elliot Pierre. We're going to kick this off the same way we start every episode off, with a moment of gratitude. I know that you could be doing a million other things with your time, and the fact that you spend it with us truly does mean the world to me. So thank you. On that note, Tanner, hit him with the intro. How's it going, you guys? It's Jake White, JJW, uh, coming at you from uh, Neural Toyota in Fort McMurray. Uh, just wanted to say hi and come on down, check the place out. Hi, my name's Richard. I'm the service manager here at Neural Toyota. Hi there, I'm Adam. Uh, I'm here at Neural Toyota. I'm a product advisor. Hi, I'm Cass. I'm the appointment coordinator. Happy to help you. Hey, it's Keith Simpson here. I'm the general manager of Neural Toyota, soon to be Fort McMurray Toyota. Pretty excited for our new dealership. As you've seen, you met all my staff. These guys are all my family. We're here to take care of you. Come on down and be part of our family. Come join us every Saturday from 7 till close at Avenue Eatery and Cafe to play board games and help raise money for the stallery. And we are back. Big shout out to Noral Toyota, our title sponsor for today's episode. We really do appreciate your ongoing support. As you guys know at home, I don't introduce my guests because they can do a better job at that than myself. So sir, can you please tell everybody at home who you are and what you're about? Hi, um, gee, that was a pretty good intro. I'm, uh, I'm Max McCoy. I'm uh, the captain of the Fort McMurray Oil Barons, and uh, yeah, just gonna hang out at the Dream Home here, you know, you know, talk. Yeah. Okay, what's your last name? <laughs> uh, McCoy, M C C O Y. That uh, sounds familiar. I think somebody in your family might be in the dental industry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, my dad's a dentist up here in Fort McMurray. I've yeah. heard the radio ads once or twice. Yeah, jeez, <laughs> yeah, geez, yeah ah. no, those are from a while ago. Yeah, yeah no, me, me and my little siblings, uh, my little sister, my little brother, they uh, we all. Kind of used us for our, uh, our cuteness when we were a little bit younger. Yeah, yeah it was good, good, uh, good, uh, good publicity there. for him. Yeah, That's literally. Awesome. Yeah, there you so go. So you're local, born and raised, just like myself. That's awesome. Yeah. So you obviously grew up watching the Barons. Yeah. Yeah. So of course. how did like? Obviously, you grew up watching them. You know who they are. Was it a team that you wanted to play for? Was it like how did this all from little kid radio ads liking <laughs> and playing hockey to becoming the captain of the team? How how does that? Oh, yeah, God. honestly, no, I mean, I'm so grateful to have the position I am, or yeah. I have, and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, when I'm younger, I, uh, I go, everybody in the community goes to the games, and it's, uh, it's obviously very special for, for me to get to play on the team, let alone be the captain, yeah. and, uh, yeah, I mean, when I was younger, I mean, you always, you always look up to these, these, these it's like the best, best game in town, right, so mm -hmm. you go and you look, and you, you go watch, and go with all your friends and your family, Yeah. and uh, went south, played a couple games, or a couple years of AAA, down um down there and come back and i mean but when i got the uh, the opportunity to come join the team it was a no-brainer for me so when it comes to hockey so many kids in this community have to go away at a young age to play in different areas mm -hmm. like at notre dame or like you said down yeah. south in edmonton or somewhere yeah. um was that the case for you as well yeah yeah so i went down to an academy called oha edmonton okay it was a part of the canadian sports school hockey League. i think that's how it's pronounced it's cssh i don't know where which how the s's work but right. uh yeah, uh, no, so I went down there, I played my midget 15, which was a league just full of 15 year olds, and then two years of midget AAA. Okay. Or I guess it's called U18 now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, just came back here. Okay, so once you finish down there, you're able to come try out for the Barons and make the team here, is that how that worked? Yeah, kind of. I mean, there's there's a kind of a opportunity to sign, because you'll, you'll talk to different scouts from different teams, and then they all kind of, they offer you LOIs, which is a letter of intent, and, uh, okay. and then, yeah, Fort McMurray was one of those teams, and luckily enough, I was able to come back here. Okay, and so you, I was talking to the boys upstairs earlier, you're coming to the tail end of your career with the Barons. Yeah, yeah. So that's my third year, and you're only allowed to play until you're 20 in this league. Okay. And so I'm 20 years old, so this is my last uh, eligible season. Okay. And so now, what is the next step for you? What are you hoping to move into next? Yeah. So I mean, at this point, it's kind of uh, it's kind of something that's up in the air because there is mm -hmm. there's opportunities to move down to the states and go play there. And I mean, play Division One would be my goal. Mm -hmm. um, there's Division Three. There's uh, U Sports in Canada. There's, I mean, there's always the option of just going to school and just yeah. pursuing other things. I mean, That's at this right. point, 
at this point, I mean, I'm just trying to enjoy the season and just, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to, trying to put that in the, yeah, fair enough. in the back, the back mirror and back yeah. of your head. So, yeah. So how is the season this year going for you guys? It's good. We have a really good group of guys. Like everybody's, uh, there's a lot, a lot of, a lot of good character guys and, uh, our, our team's, uh, it's pretty solid. We've been kind of unfortunate with injuries. I don't think we've ever seen a team this plagued with injuries and suspensions as, a uh, as, a uh, as we've had this year. So yeah, I think in, in face of all that adversity, we've been doing pretty well. Yeah. And so prior to this year, you guys had to play during COVID. What yeah, was that? <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, no, that was. Uh, it's, it's a different experience. I mean, it's yeah. still cool. It's the, the hockey's still unbelievable. Right. But um, no, I mean, obviously having fans now is so much better. Like it's mm -hmm. uh, it's really an advantage. A lot of people. I mean, you kind of hear it like the home court advantage, but it actually is like I think Fort Mac genuinely is easier and like more of an advantageous place to play. Yeah. Because of the fans and it's just it. It almost intimidates the other teams, if that yeah. makes sense. It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's good. It's, uh, it's just great to have the support of the community behind you. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're on the road, because, well, like you said, Fort McMurray really does rally behind their team. Yeah. We're blessed to be up in Northern Alberta, and, like, I think you guys are well-sponsored. You have an awesome yeah. dream home like this. Oh, it yeah. helps with the, the funding. Um, when you go to different arenas, do you see the attendance the same as you do here? Do you see the same kind of fandom, or is this kind of... A unique place. Yeah, I mean, there's there's places in the in the league that have like lots of attendance. Like, I know Brooks, yeah. Okotoks, uh, Spruce Grove, Sherwood Park, or they're all right. But I mean, in terms of like the actual like, I don't know if the, what the word is enthusiasm, maybe, or just yeah. like the amount of people that come in, like, or genuine like fans of the team. It's not just another day at the rink for them. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. I think I think it's it's bar none here. It's great. Nice. What school did you go to when you were here? High school. Uh, I went to McTavish from grade seven to nine, and then I finished. I graduated from Merck. Okay. Yeah. What was the reason for the switch? Uh, so I went to McTavish because they have that hockey program there. Peak. Uh, yeah, Peak. I think it was Edge at the time when edge. I was there. Yeah, there it was, it was Edge that. for a little bit. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was Edge for a little bit, then it turned into Peak. I think right. it's. I don't know. I don't know what's on for under now. I think it might still be Peak. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I was there from seven to nine. Got the opportunity to go down south. Played ten, eleven, twelve there, and then I mean. I, incidentally, that was COVID season was at the very end there. It was uh, March of 2020 when I was right. in grade 12. And right. so I came back and I was at Merck kind of during that semester. Yeah. Just because like, a majority of my friends were there and right. that's kind of where I wanted to kind of graduate from. What's that like? Because I've had a few friends growing up here that played hockey as well and then had to go away and come back and uh, for hockey and for football, actually. Yeah. And you're away from your friends and then you come back and obviously like when my boys came back it was just like riding a bike it's like they yeah, never exactly. left but when you are away from your friend group especially at that age what's that like on the road how do you how do you keep in contact with everybody yeah i mean i think we're in a pretty special time where like i mean you can just go on your phone and it's like your next door neighbors kind of thing right like yeah. it's uh you can facetime you call i mean it is kind of like you said like it's like riding a bike as soon as you get back it's like you, you never left and yeah I'm, I was lucky enough to have a good friend group where like, that was the case, and you get uh, you have a group, yeah, a group of guys, and it's just, yeah, there's no, there's no real long yeah. time lapse there. You just can yeah. get right back into it. So, uh, I stayed in touch with them obviously in the summertime. I came back, and it's not like I was gone from their lives, or they were gone from mine. So, mm -hmm. uh, no, it was, uh, it was actually it was a smooth transition more than you might think. Yeah, especially nowadays, like like you said, where you do have. FaceTime and you guys yeah. are on your phone and you can literally like look at the individual no, for sure Yeah, so you didn't miss that much of a beat. No, not really. I mean obviously you miss a couple of events and stuff like that yeah. But I mean it's a sacrifice you make for doing what you want to do. That's right. Yeah. That's right So where did your love for hockey come from? Uh, yeah, well, that's a, that's a pretty hard-hitting question there. Yeah. I, uh, I mean obviously you grow up and uh, I don't know if it's kind of forced on you more if you, like I don't know my, my dad he loved the game. He, yeah, uh, he kind of got me into it because like it's great for life skills and it's great just a good tool to have he's mm -hmm. like his big thing is you can move anywhere you want in the world and there's going to be beer league hockey when you're older and you That's can right. just jump right in and as long as you're not the worst player out there everybody yeah. seems to like you so yeah uh, that was his big reason for putting me in it and then i ended up being all right at it so okay i kind of got the opportunity to go a little bit further than a lot of people do which is i'm very fortunate for so yeah yeah so Speaking of that, like, because you're right in regards to like, there's this is a hockey community. Yeah. Like, everybody plays hockey. Mm -hmm. Everybody feels that their son is go or daughter is going to go to like that yeah. next step. Um, what do you think kind of separated you from like literally your peer group in regards to like the skill set to play a little bit 
higher up from just, you know, the house leagues? It's a, it's a very, very interesting question. I, uh, yeah, I feel like um, a lot of it's just, I don't know if it's work ethic or focus, focus or determination or what that is, but like, I think I took it a lot very seriously when I was younger, which mm -hmm. I think, I mean, obviously it's going to take it seriously at every level, but when I was younger, a lot of people, would, it was just kind of another hobby for them, whereas I right. like, really like wanted to get better and excel in it. So I kind of built those, those that foundation okay. and kind of build off that. Okay. I, I think at least, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I think I'm just lucky to have yeah. the opportunity. That's but, right. Uh, I think that's for me at least, that's where it all kind of came. And then obviously my dad, he loves the game. He's looking mm -hmm. for anything and everything I can do to be better. So he yeah. kind of helped me along the way. Very cool. Yeah. Listen, before we start with some new questions, we got to throw to an ad. So sure. Carrie from Patchouli Rose, take it away. Hi everyone, it's Carrie with Patchouli Rose here at Thickwood Barbershop. If you're wondering what to get your loved one this season for Valentine's Day, I make an all natural anti-aging skin serum called Good Skin. It's good for men and women and it's available for purchase here at the barbershop, downtown at the corridor shops and events, and on my website. Thank you for your support. Carrie, thank you very much for your ongoing support. We really do appreciate it. So we're gonna get off the top of hockey for a second. Outside of playing hockey, what do you do in your, your downtime? What activities keep you busy? Uh, downtime? Uh, well, lately in the winter time, it's, uh, I mean, it's hard during the hockey season because I mean, I love to snowboard. I, uh, I mean, it's not really, it's hard because if you get hurt, then it kind of, there's an investment made in you, obviously. That's, I was just so. gonna be, I was just gonna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, you snowboard, you out of your guy. No, <laughs> I know, yeah, I, I love to snowboard in the winter time, yeah. but uh, yeah, with hockey, I can't, it's kind of hard to do that. So I right. mean, we go out on the lake, we go ice fishing. Okay. Uh, there's lots of team events. We just go and hang out together. I mean, that's the best part about Fort Mac too, is kind of, yeah. it's all so close. That's right. So that's right. if you're not like, in a big city, it's not like 45 minutes to your friend's house. Everybody's just so close. That's so right. I think uh, a big part of Fort Mac is kind of making your own fun. It's mm -hmm. kind of it's more the people you're with and what you're doing. So Facts. that's what I think. Yeah. And what about in your summer? What, what do you oh think? yeah. Summer. No, we're, uh, it's lots of lake life, uh, yeah. golf. Oh yeah. No, we go, we go, uh, we go wake surfing all the time. Yeah. Yeah. With Gregoire Lake. Nice. And, uh, yeah, we play baseball, uh, golf's big, obviously for hockey. I mean, we all just, yeah. I don't know why it's always so like directly correlated, but I feel like a lot of people play hockey, play golf. That's and, true. Yeah. Uh, so when you were a kid, did you play other sports as well? Or was it always just hockey? Or did you find yourself baseball, soccer, yeah. things like that? No, I was all over the map. I, yeah. uh, I played baseball for sure. I think that was my, probably my second favorite sport. And then mm -hmm. uh, tried my hand in football a little bit. Soccer, I played down, uh, I don't know, it's kind of Fury or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, playing Fort Mac. I played on that when I was really young. Right. And then, uh, yeah, I tried out lacrosse, tried out basketball, just kind of dipped my toe in everything and then realized hockey's kind of... Yeah. Or I wanted to put all my chips. How old were you when you kind of made that decision to like really invest in hockey? I want to say, I think the last time I played any other sport other than hockey, I think I played basketball in grade six. So probably around there. I think I played baseball up until grade five, six. Kind of okay. like a going into junior high is kind of where I, yeah. it kind yeah. of trailed off on yeah. its own. Interesting. Because yeah, once you, especially nowadays, like you can't be like a Bo Jackson yeah. or like, uh, yeah, who yeah. goes and plays all these sports. Like you need to be invested in whatever no, you sure. decide to. Yeah. To I, feel, I, I feel like it's kind of at that point where like uh, all these sports are just kind of, they've kind of jumped so high where like, it's not, it's like a, it's past the fundamental learning. Like you need to be super specifically yeah. like invest in that sport, especially with training too. Like you That's train right. so different for football than you yeah. would hockey. Yeah. Trains are different for baseball, how you would That's like, right. badminton or tennis or something like that. What is the training like for you? Cause I just like, Back in the day, go to the gym, work out, do it. No, yeah. You're like, you just like, are you going to the gym? Yeah, that, that's all you need to do. So, what would a workout be like for like a, for a hockey player? Yeah, so I mean, it's it's a lot of interval training, right? Because you're you're only really on the ice for 45 seconds, and you get like a four minute break. So you're kind of mm -hmm. looking for just that burst of just all out work, 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 work. So right, it's a lot of yeah, just like interval training when you're running and stuff like that. And then obviously you're using your full body in terms of skating, body checking, mm -hmm. making passes, shooting the puck. It's kind of everything. So you're kind of looking for that balance and yeah. trying not to just go too much in one direction, which is hard because obviously yeah. people try and just like, they have their favorites and stuff. So yeah. it's kind of have to keep disciplined and try and make sure you're working on everything. Mm -hmm. Now my last question for you before I cut you loose is you're the captain. Yeah. What does that entail? What does that mean to be a captain of a team? Yeah. I mean, like first off, I know, I know the question you're asking, but again, it's 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 a dream come true for me. I, yeah. I, I take so much pride in it. I love it. But uh, in terms of being a captain, I think a lot of it's just being a good role model, 
uh, our coaches like to make sure that we keep people accountable. So it's one thing to be a role model and we say to be a leader is to actually make sure you keep people accountable. Okay, like, that's keep, nice. And keep people to the standard that you set. And so, right. I mean, it's hard to do, obviously. And I mean, I, I'm still trying to get better at it. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, I have a really good group of assistant captains with me. And I don't know if you got yeah, Austin Spiridakis, Ryder Mater, Chris Kabelka. They're, they're all really good. And I try and delegate to them as much as I can, too. So, okay. Yeah. That's a great life skill. Those words that you just use and delegate and utilize the team around you. That's like, that's not just hockey. Like, yeah, that's a fantastic life skill to have. No, man. for sure. Yeah. yeah. So just being controlling, I guess. I think your dad made the right decision on getting you to play <laughs> hockey. Like, yeah. that was a very, like, structured <laughs> sentence. I'm like, man, this guy's applying for a job or something here. <laughs> that was awesome, man. I I'm appreciate impressed. that. that Thank was you. Awesome. Thank you. Well, listen, man, that's the end of our interview. But before I cut you loose, everybody gets a shameless shout out or plug. So you have the mic, the camera, the lights. Have fun. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, we're at the dream home. I think it's important. It's, uh, it really helps our team out when you guys can, uh, when you guys can, I mean, obviously, there's a chance to win the dream home, but it, uh, it really helps us out in terms of uh, supporting us and allowing us to do what we do out in the ice and giving us the chance to, to live out our dreams. The pun there that Jerry always uses, I guess. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, buy your tickets. Good luck. Hopefully you win. There we go. Hopefully I win. I've been yeah, buying these go. tickets since uh, I was a teenager. So a bad this is my year. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Good luck. Yeah. Well, man, thank you very much for sitting down. Do appreciate it. Best of luck this uh, rest of your season. Yeah, I appreciate it. Everybody at home, thank you for tuning in. It does mean the world to me. Big <laughs> shout out to Neral Toyota, our title sponsor, as well as Patchouli Rose. Um, Carrie, we appreciate your ongoing support as well. Everybody at home, please come out and buy a ticket to the Oil Baron's Dream Home. I hope you're having a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace. See ya. What a deadly old way to end another morning show. Later, boss. It's so ballistic! <laughs> Talk about quenching your ugly thirst. Really?